Hey there, welcome to our newest installment of the Cosmetology Student Review with the Intentional Classroom. So I've been asked quite a bit for something on the structure of the hair and what does it look like and how is it built and why do we need to know this stuff? So I decided to do a quick video on hair. What the heck is it? What is it made of? What does it look like? Why do we need to know this to successfully do what we're going to do to hair, okay? So as always, don't forget to follow, to share, so to subscribe. If you subscribe, you always know when we have new content coming out. I've got some new collaborators joining up, so I'm super excited that our library will be growing here shortly. So please, please, please subscribe. If you like the video, make sure you share it with everybody that you know um, and really help us reach the goal of reaching as many students and teachers as we possibly can, okay? So without any further delay, let's talk about four key things that you need to know about the structure of hair. We're going to start by talking about the layers of the hair. Then we're going to talk about the actual structure, the keratin protein and what that looks like and why. Why do we need to know any of this information? All right. So that's the goal over the next 10, 15 minutes of your life. Starting with the layers of the hair, right? We're going to start this in. We're going to start inside of the hair, right? We have a cuticle layer, which is the outer layer of the hair. We have the cortex, which is the second layer. It's in between the cuticle and then the medulla, which is the innermost layer of the hair, but it's not always present, all right? So these three parts of the hair, the layers of the hair are what we are looking at whenever we do things like hair color or texture. Um, even when we style it, even when we dry it and we, or we wet it down and we dry it, we are dealing with the layers of the hair, okay? So let's talk about the purpose of each of these, starting with our cuticle layer. This serves as your front door, okay? So the cuticle is how it, it, it creates the barrier between the outside world and the cortex, which is where all of our magic actually happens, okay? So the cuticle layer serves as your front door. If you have super fine, thin hair, you usually have a very loose cuticle and it's kind of like a screen door. It's easy to walk into. It's easy for rain to get on into the house if you've got a screen door, okay? So fine hair, the cuticle layer is very easy to manipulate. It's very easy to open the door for us. There's, there's essentially no lock on it whatsoever. You can just walk right in, okay? Coarse hair, however, is the opposite. It's super compact, that cuticle layer. It's very strong. It's very hard to open the cuticle. It is like having a steel door as your front door, okay? So coarse hair, much harder to change because it's a lot harder to get into that cortex and do what we need to do, okay? The cuticle must be opened to truly create long-term change to the hair. So anytime we do texture, so perming or relaxing, anytime we color it, if it's gonna be long-term, we have to get through that cuticle layer of the hair first, okay? Cuticle, that's where we damage it. Often we damage that hair. Sometimes we even burn it off to the point that there is no door at all. It's just an open hole into the house, okay? So the cuticle layer is important. It is also the layer that we are often affecting with conditioners, things like that. So the cuticle layer is your front door and how you treat it is it really going to determine the integrity of your hair long term. Okay. How do we open said door? Well, it could be from brushing, you know, even just brushing up the hair, brushing it the wrong way, teasing, that roughs up that cuticle, right? So if it's a really windy day, that door could get battered around and it could open on its own. And that's what brushing is basically doing, right? Brushing is a windy day that's just roughing up that, that cuticle layer of the hair, okay? We also open it through heat, okay? So anytime we pull a blow dryer through it or a flat iron through it, even hot water opens up the cuticle for us, okay? So a lot of times when we do that perm, we use warm water, it opens the cuticle, it kind of opens up that door for us, okay? Does some damage, but it also opens the door for us. Finally, we have chemicals that can open up the door for us. So the most common chemical used is ammonia, right? Ammonia is an ammonium thioglycolate from a perm, right? Ammonium is, or ammonia is found in hair color. It's in the tube of color, opens up the cuticle layer for us. So chemicals is the last way that we really often open up that front door, okay? So remember, cuticle layer is the front door. 
that brings us into the cortex, the inside of your house, okay? This is where the magic happens, is the cortex of the hair. The inside, this is where your protein and your melanin lives, okay? This is where it really exists and thrives. If we are not in the cortex, we are not creating long-term change. Does that mean we can't change the hair without getting into it? No, temporary hair color or mascara, that basically stains the cuticle layer of the hair. We don't have to get into the cortex but I, you noticed I said temporary, right? Doesn't last forever, it's not permanent change. If we wanna make permanent change, we have to get into that cortex of the hair, okay? Finally, we have the medulla. The medulla doesn't have a purpose. Um, as of right now, science has not recognized a true reason for the medulla. It is a very thin, transparent sheath inside the hair. A lot of people don't have it. My fine blonde hair probably does not have a medulla inside if we put me under a microscope, okay? So just know that it is the third layer that could end up on a state board for you, but it does not have a true purpose in what we do for hair, okay? Now let's talk about keratin. We've talked a lot about, you know, the cuticle, the cortex. Well, the keratin is what kind of makes all of that. It is the foundation of everything that we are. Key word keratin, you will hear it. You've heard it in keratin treatments. You will see it all over state board. It often asks, what is the protein that the hair is made of? Keratin is the answer, okay? It is a tough fibrous protein made of about 18 different amino acids. You do not need to memorize all 18 amino acids, guys. So please don't take the time to do that. There are some that you need to know, but really it's, it's the protein that makes everything up for us. Okay. It's super, super strong. Where do we find it? We find it in our hair. We find it in our nails. We also find it in like the horns of a ram. Okay. Also the, the beaks of a bird. It really is the concentration of the keratin that determines how strong and how hard that actually is. Okay. So a beak is going to have way more concentrated protein than our soft, nice, lovely hair does. Okay. Okay, so like I mentioned, it's made up of 18 different amino acids, the top one being something called cysteine. Cysteine is an amino acid that is very rich in sulfur. So we're going to talk about bonds here in a second, and you're going to hear the word sulfur a lot because the, the cysteine amino acids is what helps us create disulfide bonds in our hair. Should be a familiar term for you, hopefully. Okay, so the way a keratin protein is built is it's a strain of amino acids that are connected by peptide bonds. These are also known as end bonds because they connect the end of one amino acid to the end of another amino acid, okay? So these amino acids could be carbon, they could be oxygen. There's all, like I said, 18 different ones, or they could be cysteines, okay? So here's an example of a polypeptide chain, okay? So this is what I was just referencing. You have an amino acid and then a peptide bond, amino acid and a peptide bond. While I have three here, guys, this goes on for millions and millions and millions of chains, okay? This is not just three amino acids. It just keeps going. I just can't draw all of that on a computer, okay? So when you have this chain of amino acids and peptide bonds, it is called a polypeptide chain. Poly means many, okay? Inappropriate alert, poly means many, polygamy means many wives, polypeptide means many, pepti many peptides, okay? So a polypeptide chain is multiple peptide bonds connecting multiple amino acids, okay? That is half of a keratin protein right there. So what happens is two polypeptide chains kind of line up with each other and they connect through something called side bonds because one chain connects to the side of another chain, okay? So these side bonds, guys, there's three different types of side bonds, salt, hydrogen, and disulfide, okay? So you can see there's one polypeptide chain up top, there's another one on the bottom, and then they are connected by these side bonds, salt, hydrogen, and disulfide. The disulfide bond is always going to attach two cysteine amino acids together because disulfide means two sulfurs, right? When we dissect something, we, di we cut it into two, okay? So disulfide means two sulfur, which means two cysteine amino acids, basically, all right? So disulfide always has those cysteine amino acids. Hydrogen and salt can connect as long as it's a negative and a positive, positive kind of coming together. They can connect all different types of amino acids. How do we break these bonds, right? In order to change the shape of hair, to make it straight to curly, curly to straight, any of that stuff, we have to break the bonds in order to reshape things, okay? So we break the salt bonds by changing the pH. Now, this is simple. The minute we put water on the hair, we've changed the pH. 
right? The pH of hair is 4.5 to 5.5. Water is about a seven. So the minute we put water on the hair, we have changed the pH of that hair. We've broken all the salt bonds, okay? Hydrogen, we break every time we put heat or water on the hair. This is why we can shampoo and blow dry the hair into a new shape. It's not permanent because these bonds are super easily broken, but also easily go back together, okay? So anytime we wet that hair down, we've broken those two bonds, we've done half the work. But then there's that disulfide bond. Disulfide bonds can only break with the use of chemicals. You have to use a chemical of some sort. Um, often it's thioglycolate, which is hydrogen, okay? so. Disulfide, we only break with the use of a chemical. We can't break it any other way. So when we're doing a perm, we put that perm solution on, that's what we're doing is we're breaking that disulfide bond down so that all of the bonds are broken and we can permanently change the shape of that hair. Finally, you have that peptide bond. Don't do it, just don't do it. If you break a peptide bond, you've broken the hair onto the floor, okay? We don't break those end bonds, right? We don't break up polypeptide chains, or we shouldn't at least. When you see hair falling off, right? Melting off perhaps, snapping off with a brush, it's usually because we have broken the peptide bonds and that's never going to be okay, all right? All right, so that's a quick overview of the layers of the hair, the keratin protein. I very quickly want to talk about the system, right? What is the whole structure of that hair look like? Because it's going to be on your state board. They're going to want to know which part is responsible for what. So we start with the hair shaft, right? That's the part we get to play with. That's the part we put our hands on. This is my hair shaft, okay? Then you have your hair follicle. This is where the hair actually grows from, okay? This sits underneath the skin in like a little fatty pocket, okay? And that's where you actually find a lot of the magic that needs to happen, right? That's where the hair grows from. Then in that hair follicle, you have a hair bulb, which contains the papilla and the matrix, two very important parts of the structure of your hair to help it grow, to help it look nice, things like that. The dermal papilla is a vascular network that feeds the hair, okay? So the papilla is what provides all of the nutrients because remember, everything we eat, everything we put in our mouth comes out in our hair, okay? That's why they can drug test your hair, guys, right? So a dermal papilla is what's actually making that happen, okay? The matrix is where the keratin is produced. Remember, I just said that our hair is made up all this inner working kind of collection of keratin and the matrix is what's creating that keratin for us. And then the last structure I just wanted to mention is the erector pili muscles, because this is what creates goosebumps. It's a muscle that actually makes the hair stand up under certain circumstances, okay? Again, this is a quick overview, guys. We could probably go into a long lecture on what does the hair chef do? What does the follicle do? You know, you count on your teachers for that, but I wanted to kind of give you a quick overview of what these things do so that when you're preparing for that state board, you have a general understanding. So why does any of this matter? You know, so many people are like, well, I'm great at cutting hair, great at coloring hair. I know how to do this. I don't really need to know that. Fair. I mean, I guess, but you can't manipulate the hair successfully if you don't understand the structures that you're working with. If you don't understand the how, the why, why that chemical is doing what it's doing to the hair. I believe that hairstylists are brilliant people that truly understand more anatomy and biology than anyone gives us credit for. And that's because I really believe, I, I teach students to understand the why, not just, oh, I should do this because my teacher said so, okay? So that's why it matters. It matters that you know what you're manipulating when you do so that you don't hurt people and that you can successfully change the color and the shape and the texture without actually hurting anything, okay? So that's what I have. Don't forget, please, please, please subscribe to my channel. I am trying to get those subscribers up here. Go to Facebook, Instagram, follow us at the Intentional Classroom, the Intentional Classroom course, all of that jazz. Share this video with your friends. Share this video with anyone that you might go to school with that might need a quick overview. And don't forget to ace that test, okay, guys? That test, those tests are no joke. You need to prepare for it. Watch my other videos. I have one on hair color, on formulation, on perming, um, and I, I hope to continue Continue creating these for you guys so that you have everything that you need. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, share all the good stuff that you're supposed to do with this whole YouTube stuff. Okay. Have a great one, everybody.